Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now as a maker with varied interests, there's no shortage of unfinished personal projects in my workspace. But after a busy week, I needed something fun that I could knock out in an afternoon. And I think I've got just the project. So grab your treasure map and your doubloon, and let's get down to it. This is One-Eyed Willie's Copper Bones Key from the movie The Goonies. It's a prop that we see for less than 20 seconds in the movie. Thankfully, someone decided to make a 3D model of it and put it online for fans of the film to make one for their collection. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. But before I get to painting, I want to soften the features of this print. With this being the only known photo of the prop, and the fact that the key was hundreds of years old, I figured it wouldn't be as crisp as this print is. So I grabbed a sanding twig and got down to sanding the edges. Once the hard edges were rounded over a bit, I switched over to my rotary tool with a wire wheel attachment and used that to deal with the hard to reach areas of the piece. I tried to add in some nicks and bumps and smoothed out the flatter areas as if it had been tumbled in the sand for decades. These types of additions and subtractions allow me to impart some of my own backstory onto the prop, since we don't know much about it from how little time it's in the movie. This also helps me with what direction I should take the paint in. Now that everything looks a bit more organic, it's time to hit it with some primer, and then follow that up with some black spray paint. This will give us a nice dark base to build our three color copper finish off of, and should help to make the copper paint stand out. After the black paint had dried, I applied a satin clear coat to lock in the base layer, and then I could move on to the first color. And for that, I'm going with a dark brown acrylic paint. I'll cover the entire piece quickly since it's a warm day and the paint wants to dry much faster than I'd like. I'll also do my best to minimize any brush strokes in the finish since they'll really stand out once we get to applying the metallic paint. After the dark brown is dried, I can mix up the second color on our finish by adding some yellow acrylic paint to the dark brown, which will give me a warm caramel color. This color will be dry brushed over the entire piece catching some of the details in the recesses of the key and highlighting the edges. The key to a really good finish is the subtle layering of paint. Each new layer will help to give the final finish more depth, and in this case, age. And while it seems like a lot of work, it's always worth the effort in the final product. With the second layer of paint dry to the touch, I can switch to a metallic copper acrylic paint, which I'll apply with a much smaller brush. This application will be even lighter than the previous layer and will just accentuate the high spots or anything worth drawing additional attention to, like the teeth or the compass at the bottom. This is the time to show off the topography of a prop like this, so I'll focus on all the subtle bumps to help them stand out a bit more. Remember to start light, since it's always easier to add more paint than it is to take it away. If you wanted to buy yourself an insurance policy, you could apply clear coat in between each color so that if you needed to remove paint, it wouldn't take off everything you've done up to that point. The last thing I want to do, since copper would likely discolor being so close to the ocean, is add a bit of verdigris patina. I added some baking soda to my acrylic paint because it adds a subtle cloudiness when thinned with water and this piece could benefit from it. So I mixed it up, misted the piece with water, and got to applying it across the surface of the prop and dabbing away the excess with a damp towel to create more variation in the finish. When I was happy with how everything looked and the paint had sufficiently dried, I grabbed my clear coat spray and locked in the paint. The last thing to add to this prop is a leather lanyard. This one had some kinks in it, so I wet it and gave it a stretch to straighten it out, and then I could get to stringing it through the openings at the bottom of the key and adding a knot at the end. And 
with that, I think it's time to head to the goondocks and see if we can find One-Eyed Willie's rich stuff. Now all this prop sees less than 20 seconds of total screen time in the movie, I'd say this is a respectable replica good for any collector. And if Goonies isn't your thing, then hopefully you found this technique useful and will apply it to something that you're working on. Well that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.